Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial for Cursed City, and today we are painting Gorslav the Gravekeeper. He's a really awesome model. So, what we're going to do is going to jump straight in and start painting him. He's been primed with grace here, and the first colour we're going to be using is Flesh Terra's Red. Now, we're going to be using this for his under robe, and by under robe, I basically mean all of this front section, and it comes down to around about here. Where it cuts off you can see there's a difference here so this bit here coming around to there is all going to be a different color so to demonstrate this we've got some flesh terrors red on our brush and what we want to do is just want to start painting this all over the under robe this does include this little bit down here Now what we do want to do, just to be certain, just look over the other side. Yes, that is correct. This part is also going to be flesh terra red as well. And then we come over this side. It basically goes up to there. Just like that. And with that done, what we're now going to do is going to make a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part black Templar mix. I'm going to use this over the top, that flesh tear is red. This is going to make a very, very dark red, but that is exactly what we're after. Much like with the Kasagi Night Guard. And with that done, what we now want to do, don't worry about highlighting it, we're going to save all the highlights to later, we're going to get all the base coats done first. What we're going to do, is we're going to take some silicarnum grey, I'm going to paint this over the other robe, so his over robe is what we're calling that. This is going to be black. And with that Basilicanum Grey applied, what we're then going to do is take some Black Templar. I'm going to paint this over the top of where we've just applied that Basilicanum Grey. And with that done, still sticking with the Black Templar, what we're going to do is going to use this on his boots. So he's got one foot here, poking out underneath his robe. And he's got another one just here. What we're also going to do is going to use this Black Templar to paint in. the ropes around the hand. Hanging off his belt. <laughs> I 
And with that done, what we're now going to do is going to use some Saigal Brown. We're going to use this to paint in the straps. Now he's got his belt just down here. It also comes around. There's a little bit poking through just there. And a little bit there. And what we've also got is a strap on his head. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to colour in the skin. And the colour we're going to make is a roughly six parts contrast medium, two parts crude camo, and one part basilicanum grey. This gives us a really thin, dark, greeny, pallid tone. What we're going to do, we're going to paint this all over his skin. And with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna paint in the bones on his headdress. It's not really a headdress, it's more like a head bone thing. It's more like a helmet. Anyway, we're gonna be painting those in the colors we're gonna be using our Agaros tunes, Saigal Brown, and Contrast Medium. And the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna take Agaros tunes first on our brush, and we're just gonna paint this all over our bones. like so. It's a very heavy coat, that's okay. I want it to be nice and wet. I'll make sure that we get the underside as well. I want to get the back. Like that. Then what we want to do, wash our brush, grab some Saigal Brown, and then it's just at the top of the bones, so like here, I'm going to add this Saigal Brown on the front. And on the back. Like so. And then what we do is grab a small amount of contrast medium and just where the colours meet, just want to bend up and down. Just like that. Just kind of merging the two colours together. So. And next up, whilst that's drying, what we're going to do is we're going to take some wildwood. We're going to use this to paint in the wooden board here and his staff. Well, spade. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Agaros dunes to paint in the rope. Next 
next up, we're going to use some skeleton hoard. This is going to be to paint in the bony hand on his belt, including that little rune symbol. There, like that. And also the skulls on his back. And next up, we're going to use some thin down iron warriors to paint in our silver details. Now, these are going to include his hooks. So he's got one here in his hand and one on his belt. We're also going to use this to paint in the spikes on his back. So one here and one here. And we're also going to use this to paint in this. <laughs> Whatever the hell that's meant to be. This guy's weird. So weird. And also glorious. And with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna use some thinned down Castellax bronze. And we're gonna use this to paint in his shovel. And the mask metal bit on the front of the mask. It would also be remiss of me if I didn't point out that when we did the Iron Warriors spikes on the back, they actually come out of his chest because as previously established, this dude is weird. <laughs> and with that done, what we're now gonna do is gonna use some Basilicanum Gray to shade both Castellax Bronze and the Iron Warriors. And so with that done, all of our base coats are now on the model. So what we're going to do is going to take him to the next level. We could leave it there, but we never do. <laughs> so the colour we're going to be using first is Waz Daka Red. And we're going to be using this to highlight the red robes. And what do we want to do? Just want to very carefully start picking out all of the sharp areas and folds. in that undercloak. And with that done, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take some squig orange. I'm gonna apply this as a little spot highlight to all the sharpest areas around the tears in the fabric and on the creases. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Dawnstone to highlight the black details. And with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Administratum Grey and use this as a little spot highlight on those black areas, just picking out the corners and the sharpest areas in all of our black details. And with 
And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Screaming Skull and we're going to use this to highlight all of our bones. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down deep kin flash. And we're going to use this to effectively do a really wide highlight slash relayering of all the raised details on all the flesh. And with that done, what we're now going to do is going to take some pallid witch flesh. And we're going to apply this to the sharpest areas in all of that skin that we've just highlighted with the deep kin flesh. Just like this. With that done, we should some beautifully disgusting skin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some shyish purple, not very much of this at all. And we're just gonna add this inside any of the little holes in his, in his skin. Just like this. Just using really small amounts here. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're just going to work on the shovel. The recipe is very similar for the headdress, and it's different obviously for the silver, but for the shovel, what we want to do is we want to use some iron warriors and we want to use a dry brush. What we want to do is we just want to dry brush, brace it a little bit here with my finger, going down like this. Only in that direction. it looks somewhat like that and so with that dry brush applied what we now want to do is we want to take some iron hand steel we want to use this to highlight all the scuff marks in the top of the shovel that you can see coming down it as well as just highlight this top edge what we also want to do is we're going to use this iron hand steel to highlight all of our metallics, including the Castellax bronze on the headdress and the silver down here. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to grab some Volupus pink. I'm going to use this to paint in his tongue. as well as the inside of his mouth. And with that done, we then want to take some Screaming Skull and we want to use this to pick out each of his teeth. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to use this to highlight his shovel's handle. Just 
picking out all of these edges. You can also use this on the wood just down here as well. And so with that done, Gorslab the Gravekeeper is now finished in all of his weird glory. God, he's weird. Anyway, what we're going to do now is I'm going to quickly show you how to paint in this zombie. Um, and the colour we're going to make is roughly five parts contrast medium to one part pterodon turquoise to one part black templar. This is going to create a really lovely, thin, ghoulish black. You'll see what I mean in just a second. I'm going to grab that on our brush. I'm going to paint this all over his skin. You see? He does not look well. As well he shouldn't. He's a zombie. And with that done, what we're then going to do is create a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Creed Camo and Nasdreg Yellow to give us this really gross yellowish awfulness that we're going to paint all over the tentacles, branches sprouting out of our zombie. Just like this. So with that done, just to match with the rest of our bases, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Basilicana and Grey. I'm going to use this to paint in the rocky, soily area. Because in all the rest of our bases, we've done it this way. And of course, the main thing that we're using to cover in all that negative space is Astrogranite Debris. And this slightly closer matches it than anything else. Want to colour that in like that? Something on the back. And then next up, we're going to make a roughly one to one mix of Black Templar and Wildwood, and we're going to use this to paint in the tree stump just here. And then next up, much like we did on Gorslav, we're going to take some Shayish Purple. I'm going to use this to fill in anywhere where the zombie is missing skin. So any little holes or wounds. Got quite a few here on his head. You can also use this just in any of the deepest recesses, like here on the cheek. And with that done, we're going to once again use some deep kin flesh just to highlight our zombie skin. And so with that done, it's now time to colour in the rest of the base. Now, as I said, the recipe for this is the same as Captain Imelda Braskov and Jelson Darak from this point on. Um, there aren't any more highlights to do on the rest of the zombie because they'll be picked up by the Tyrant's Gold dry brush that we will do. But of course, you can finish off the base in any way that you see fit. It is entirely up to you. And lo, another Cursed City character is finished and I think he's the weirdest one I know I said this several times during the actual painting but this dude is weird <laughs> I mean he's a zombie or is he is he a collection of zombies is he a collection of undead 
consciousness is all rolled into one. Is he many bodies? Is he many people? Nobody really knows. All we know is, is that he was an absolute joy to paint. Um, it's a really interesting challenge, kind of getting different varied dead skin tones out of this set. And I think we've done a really good job so far, particularly on him. It's just so creepy and gross. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you'd like to support me further, like these legends and bosses that you can see on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.